Welcome back to the video series on refrigeration and air conditioning design. Refrigeration and air conditioning design involves one of the important calculations which is called as cooling load calculations. In this video, we would be understanding in depth what is cooling load calculation, what exactly it means, and how to do those cooling load calculations. It might require two or more videos for this topic. Uh, let us see how we proceed. Uh, cooling load calculations, when I'm saying load, what load exactly means and what is cooling load calculations would be clear as outcome of this lecture. Not only that, what comprises of the cooling load and what are the various parameters we need to consider during load calculations that also will be clear to you in this small video. Uh, we would be looking into the heat transfer part, that is uh, the principles of heat transfer and their importance in the load calculations, which would give us insights into not only the load calculation procedure per se, but when you are designing a load, uh, designing an AC, that is you are doing a load calculation and arriving at the tonnage of AC, uh, this knowledge would be very important from the energy consumption point of view also. So it's not simply mechanical, or procedural load calculation, which you would be understanding. The insights are more important because uh, ready-made sheets are there, Excel sheets are there in the market, which would help you with the load calculations. But without the insights uh, from this lecture, you won't be actually uh, in the position to design a good uh, AC system for a given load. So let us try to understand the first principles in this lecture. What is the cooling load estimation or cooling load calculation? What exactly this means? So by cooling load, we actually mean the sensible heating and latent heating load on the AC. For example, in cooling load estimation, we would be interested in knowing what exactly is heating the room, what exactly is heating the space which we are trying to condition. So that is called as a sensible heat load in the cooling load calculation. Similarly, we would be interested in knowing what are the parameters which are going to increase the moisture content in the room to be conditioned, the space to be conditioned. That is the change in enthalpy because of humidification. So this is called as a latent heat load. So there are two parts and we are talking about uh, designing an AC system in a hot and humid climate, which means that designing an AC coil which would give us not only cooling, but also dehumidification. So cooling to remove the sensible heat load and dehumidification to remove the humidification load or latent heat load. That is an important aspect in cooling load estimation. So the, these are the parameters which we would be coming across when you talk about cooling load estimation. One is the sensible heat factor, other is the effective sensible heat factor, and third is the grand sensibility factor. In our earlier videos, we have seen those factors, what they mean, what they are trying to capture. Okay, so with the help of the sensible heat calculations and the latent heat calculations, we would be able to estimate these parameters also. Sensible heat factor, effective sensible heat factor, and grand sensible heat factor. So that would be an outcome of cooling load estimation. And once you get all these parameters, we would be in a position to design a coil. So designing the coil, as we had discussed earlier, means what? So why to do the load, cooling load calculations? So for doing the cooling load calculations, the objectives are, one is, as we had discussed earlier also, to find the capacity of the cooling coil in terms of refrigeration, to estimate how much dehumidified air we need to supply to the space to be conditioned so that there will be proper air conditioning. And third is to decide the coil temperature and which means apparatus dew point temperature for cooling and dehumidification process. So we had discussed this that if we know the room condition and if you know the sensible heat factor or effective sensible heat factor, then we would be in a position from the psychrometric chart to estimate the apparatus dew point. So for that, we need to calculate the effective sensible heat factor. And for calculating the effective sensible heat factor, because this line we can draw only if we are able to arrive at this effective sensible heat factor. So we had said that we have a reference point on the psychrometric chart. We would be calculating effective sensible heat factor by the load calculations. We would, getting, we would be getting a reference line 
we will be drawing a parallel from the inside conditions to the reference line and ultimately we will be getting the coil surface temperature or ADP. So this way uh, cooling load calculation is very useful. It will give us the exact breakup of what is the sensible load and what is the latent load. Now what exactly is the sensible load and what exactly is the latent load? So the room sensible heat load comprises of the following four things which you see on the slide. What are they? One is the heat transfer via the walls and the roof. So you see that any building, any space to be conditioned to have certain surfaces or structural surfaces like roofs and walls. So through these walls and roofs, you would find that there will be an incident radiation falling on that. This incident solar radiation falling on those surfaces which are opaque would result in ultimately heating of the space. And when the heat, the space becomes heated because of the transmission of the solar radiation, then that would contribute to the sensible heat load of the room. So that is one of the important parameters. In fact, it is one of the major parameters which contributes to the sensible load of the room. Another important parameter, and this is also very important, is the direct heat gain via the glass or fenestration. So you find that any hotel or any mall or any office for that matter would have certain glass area. So the glass area would be for the sunlight to come in, the glass area could be for aesthetics uh, in the design of the uh, building, which is obviously the forte of the architects. So all those glass areas, there would be incident solar radiation on those glass areas and that solar radiation would ultimately be transmitted through the transparent surfaces inside the room. It means that it will heat the room. It means that it will contribute to the sensible heat load of the room. The third parameter is, and it is an important parameter, is the ventilation load. As we were discussing in the earlier video, ventilation means you are supplying certain fresh quantity of air inside the room so that the occupants feel comfortable. So this degree of freshness would vary depending on the uh, application. For example, operation theaters would require more of the fresh air and then, for example, uh, as compared to theaters. So this quantity, not all this ventilation here would contribute to the sensible load, only the ventilation here, which escapes the coil, which bypasses the coil and enters the room, they would contribute to the sensible load. Please note, this is very important. When I'm saying that the ventilation load is a part of sensible load, it does not mean the total ventilation load contributing the sensible load. It is only the bypassed portion, the bypassed pressure, or the bypass ventilation here, which escapes the coil and enters the room, that is going to contribute to the room sensible load. Similarly, similarly, there are other parameters which will contribute to the load, and those are people which are inside the room because of metabolism contributing to the sensible load. There could be some appliances inside the room, they might contribute to the sensible load. There might be some ducts which are flowing, uh, which are passing through the room. They might also have certain heat transfer into the room. All this, they are clubbed under internal heat gain. So the internal heat gain is one of the important parameter which contributes to the room sensible heat load. So if we, if, if we can find, if we can estimate by some method, what is the heat gain via the walls, via the roofs, via the ceilings, via the partition, if you can find out what is the heat gain via the windows, via the glass areas, everything including fenestration. So that would be useful in arriving at the sensible load. If you are able to know the bypass factor of the coil, and if you know the total amount of ventilation here, we can estimate what is the bypass quantity of here, and that bypass quantity would then be helpful in arriving at the sensible load. Similarly, if we know the occupants inside the room, what they are doing inside the room, that is their activity, their metabolism, then we can estimate, we can predict their contribution to the sensible load. 
similarly about appliances and other things. So these are the important things we must have in mind. So we must have some method of arriving at this loads. That is the solar heat can load to the blast, solar heat can load through the walls and roofs, the bypass load and the internal heat can load. Now what are the parameters which would increase the moisture inside the room? That is the latent heat load. So one of the major parameter, one of the major parameter which contributes to the latent heating, the increase in the moisture, the increase in the humidity of the room is the infiltration. Now infiltration, remember that it is different from ventilation. Infiltration is the unwanted air which is getting inside the room via cracks or openings. So this is not the intentional fresh air which is entering, it is the unintentional fresh air which is entering the room but the, nevertheless it is the fresh air which enters and that fresh air which is entering via the cracks or openings of the room would contribute to increase in the latent heat flow especially because the climate is humid and then that humid air unconditioned air would enter the room and it would increase the humidity of the room and that would increase the load on this there could be leakages from the supply duct which would increase the latent heat load. Again, as we said, the not the complete ventilation air, but the bypassed outside air would contribute to the latent heating. And similar to the sensible heat gain, we talked about the internal heat gain, latent heat gain via the internal parameters, mostly because of the occupants which are there inside the room. So if we can, if we can figure out how to estimate those, then we can fairly estimate what is the load on the room or load on the space, which is to be conditioned. And this is a very important parameter ultimately in the design of AC system. Now, before going into the details of how to calculate that, okay, let me first revise what we have done. In the next video will go into the details. So I will once again revise what is the cooling load estimation. So as we said, cooling load estimation is nothing but the load and load means the load means load on the AC. And when you are talking about heating and of the room, it means that the AC has to cool the room. If you are talking about humidification of the room, it means that the AC has to dehumidify the room. So that is called as a cooling load estimation. In the next video, we will see how to do the calculations on cooling load. Thank you very much.